good morning, the congregations of Philadelphia, Taylor, and Unity United Methodist Churches. Thank you for welcoming them into your home today. Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. I hope that you've seen some wonderful fireworks and and it's wonderful that you've chosen to include worship with your the, your day of celebration. So thank you for being with us. Uh, all of us at Philadelphia, Taylor and Unity United Methodist Churches wish you a safe and happy celebration of the 4th of July. So now let us get our heads and our hearts ready to worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you today so thankful for this opportunity to come together to have this wonderful country that allows us freedom to worship. Lord, thank you for a country that is not censoring what we can put out over the airwaves when it comes to worshiping you. So, Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful nation that you have blessed us with. Lord, make us bold and clear as to what we need to do to make sure that we take care of this wonderful, uh, this wonderful place that you've given us. And now as we prepare our hearts to worship you, Lord, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit, fill each of us, and may we hear your words and understand your meaning today. Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us since last we met and for those that that need your comfort guidance your healing lord i lift them up to you now we lift each pause and lift our private concerns up to you lord for those lord who are sick and can't get out and enjoy this holiday or come to worship lord i pray your healing touch I pray that you guide their medical teams and their caregivers. Protect all of them. Make them strong and give them wisdom in this hour. We lift up our country to you, Lord. As much as we love it and celebrate it, it's broken right now. And we pray, Lord, that you heal our country. Remove the malice from people's hearts. Make them want uh, to once again work together. Because it's because our forefathers worked together that we have what we have today. And Lord, remind our elected leaders that they are here to serve and to protect. These things we ask in Jesus' name as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, 34 through 36, and from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 2, from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. And from the book of Romans, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here we go. Today we are celebrating our Independence Day. Today is our country's 245th birthday. Almost two and a half centuries ago, the United States was born based on the ideals of liberty, responsibility, godliness, and freedom to become what God intended us to become. July 4th is a celebration of freedom, and we celebrate this precious gift with 
cook-offs and uh, hot dogs and family gatherings and all these many things because this is a precious gift and it was bought by someone else's price. You see, freedom isn't free. It's very expensive. It has, a co it has cost some people everything. It cost many people their homes, their lives, their families. Freedom isn't free but it is infinitely valuable. Freedom is so valuable that our founding fathers risked everything for it. They risked their families, their reputations, their honor. They risked their very lives, many of them paying with it, with their, with paying for our freedom with their blood and the blood of their children and their brothers. Today, we worship in security and comfort, and we do that because thousands of young, and women, young men and women over the years have given their lives and shed their blood on foreign soil. They died in forsaken places with names not remembered so that we could experience the joy and the responsibility of freedom. In a letter to William Smith dated November 13, 1787, Thomas Jefferson wrote, The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. No. Freedom isn't free. The price is always paid in blood. The blood spilled by young Americans is not the first blood that was spilled for freedom. The blood spilled on the battlefields of Concord, Charleston, and Yorktown was not the first time that blood was spilled for freedom. Almost 2,000 years ago, another young man's blood was spilled upon the ground so that we could experience freedom. Jesus came in order to bring us freedom from sin and death. And as Christians, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus' message is what we just read in today's reading. Today, we observe our independence from tyranny and bondage to an oppressive government. We celebrate an independence as a nation that's temporary. A day may soon come when we no longer enjoy these freedoms, but nevertheless, we can still celebrate our independence. But shouldn't we celebrate our independence from tyranny and also the bondage of guilt, sin, fear, and death? An independence that was won over 2,000 years ago. Shouldn't we celebrate it every day? Shouldn't we celebrate this independence that will last for all eternity? Today we'll talk of three ways that Jesus sets us free from guilt if we have the faith to believe him. First, freedom from guilt. Because Jesus gives us freedom from guilt, our past can't haunt us. Do you drag your past around with you? You know what I mean. You've done things that hurt people. People have hurt you. You may feel that you failed in a marriage or at parenting. Maybe you failed financially or you failed in religion because it's just too hard to keep up with all those rules. Who could possibly keep up with them? But you failed. And the guilt of your failures and poor choices drag you down just like you have a millstone around your neck. Would you like to be free from that guilt? You can, you know, because the key word here is forgiven. In a single vic victorious stroke of life, sin, guilt, and death are gone all because of the price that our Master Jesus Christ paid for us. 
because of the work Jesus did in winning your freedom, you don't have to carry your guilt around with you. You can release it and be free. Ephesians 1 7 tells us, He is so rich in kindness that He purchased our freedom through the blood of His Son, and our sins are forgiven. Captain Rodrigo Mendoza was a slave trader in the mid 1700s. He and his men would enter the jungles of Brazil and Ecuador and they would raid the Indian villages and the Catholic missions to take prisoners to sell as slaves. In a duel over a woman, Captain Mendoza killed his own brother and finally fell into a remorse-filled depression, believing that God could never forgive him. However, one of the priests from the mission San Carlos offered Mendoza a chance to seek penance. And Mendoza was able to find forgiveness at the hands of those he had violated, both in the villages and in those missions where he had gone in and ransacked and taken people. We also find forgiveness in the nail-scarred hands of the one that we have violated and betrayed. Just as the people he had sinned against cut his guilt away from him and set him free, just the people of, that set Mendoza free, God that we have sinned against cuts our sin and our guilt away and sets us free with the forgiveness that he offers in his son Jesus Christ. So when we come to Jesus the Son of God, and let Him set us free. We are free, free from guilt. The second freedom that He offers us is freedom from consequence. Christ died in our place. When the law is broken, there are consequences. Sometimes we actually are able to escape the legal consequences of our misdeeds, but there are still consequences. The guilt that we talked about is a consequence of our sin. And there are others as well, but there is one consequence that no matter how hard our heart and how seared our conscience that we must all face. The ultimate consequence for sin is that of death. Not the physical death of the body, but an eternal spiritual death. The Bible teaches us that we will all face judgment. Romans 6.23 states it clearly. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's a pretty severe consequence. According to scripture, the ultimate consequence for our sin is one that we cannot pay. But we do not have to pay it because the penalty has already been paid. Our account has been credited as we are, as we saw a minute ago, no longer guilty. Christ has dealt with the eternal consequences for our sin. It's not that the ultimate consequence isn't required, for it is, but someone else has already paid it. When J Jesus died upon the cross, he was receiving the consequences for my sin and for your sin. In John 19, we read the story of the death of Jesus Christ. And at the end, when he called out, it is finished. At least that's how it's translated in most Bibles today. We think of it as it is finished, as in his life on earth is done, but it is finished isn't quite the accurate translation. In the original text, the word translated finished is a commercial word that means it is paid. The debt is paid in full. So when Jesus died upon the cross and he said, it is finished, 
he said their debt is paid in full. And that is what sets us free from the consequence of sin. Now don't misunderstand me. If you commit a crime that requires a jail sentence, you're probably still going to go to jail. Or if you commit something that requires a parking ticket and run that red light, we're still going to get the ticket and have to pay. In my case, it was letting my wheels cross the double line, but that's another story. But Jesus pays the consequences for what we set in motion. Jesus paid for our sins, and we are made right with him. Eternal death and separation from God are consequences that we don't have to face if we have allowed Jesus to set us free. In Jesus Christ, we have freedom. Our third freedom is freedom from accusation. We no longer have to live in fear. Colossians 1.22 But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death, to present you holy in his sight, without blemish, and free from accusation. How nice is it to not have to run and hide? You remember the story of Adam and Eve, as soon as they realized what they'd done, and they realized they were naked, what they do? They tried to run and hide. How nice is it not to have to worry about what someone else will find out about you? How nice would it be to be free from all accusations and the fear that your sins are going to be discovered? That would certainly be a freeing experience. That's the reason that Jesus sets us free from accusation. It's because when we surrender to Him and let Him have control of our lives, He makes us blameless. And because of what Jesus did for us upon the cross, we are blameless before God when we know His Son. The word blameless means free from guilt, not subject to blame. So as I said a minute ago, Jesus took care of the eternal consequences of our sin. He also took care of our guilt. He satisfied the requirements of the law. He satisfied the requirements of the blood sacrifice. When a law is broken, a penalty was required, a death had to be uh, paid, and he did that for us. Therefore, not on our own, but through him, we are found free from guilt and not subject to blame. We can stand before God and our fellow man and not fear accusation. Now being free of accusation doesn't mean that no accusation will come. Because we're going to face all kinds of accusations in this world. I mean, David accuses me of leaving the cabinet doors open. I can't imagine. We know the dogs did it. But we're going to face accusations for things all the time. And they may be well deserved. When I was accused of passing on the double yellow, yes, I passed on the double yellow and I deserved what I got. People have seen our sins and our mistakes and they want to know why we claim to be different. And this shouldn't threaten us. It should be an opportunity to share with them in the transformation that Jesus brings to our lives. We don't have to fear accusation. We're free from guilt, free of guilt. We're not subject to blame. The account has been laid to rest. Today we celebrate the freedom of our nation and the sacrifice necessary to give us the freedom that we so deeply love. But there is a freedom much greater than political freedom. And there is a freedom that we can have only in Jesus Christ when we place our trust in Him, when we surrender to Him. 
Jesus bled and died and he gave his life that, so that we could be free. And if you haven't accepted this sacrifice and the freedom it brings, I pray that you do it today. In Jesus' name, amen.
And now would you receive this benediction? Make this 4th of July memorable. Count your blessings, both those from your country and from your God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.